and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose let me say that again for emphasis and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose or purpose now I just want to dwell on this before we break bread in communion Paul begins a new thought here he says and we know the Greek word is Edo knowledge that is acquired by that which you see so it is described in the Greek as absolute knowledge because you see it it's knowledge acquired by vision in other words we can see clearly is what Paul is saying there is evidence in the life of the believer that everything is working together for good uh -huh. now there's, a, there's an English word called synergy that has gotten from this passage in scripture here the, the phrase work together working together all things work together is one it's actually one word and it's the word sunegos or sunegeo from which we get our English word synergy and the simple translation is to be a co-laborer or to cooperate are you still here so the bible says it is there's abundant evidence that everything in your life will cooperate with everything in your life one thing in your life will cooperate with another will work together with that thing to ensure that there is good coming out of that situation now behold yonder place and see joseph a boy of 17 hated by his brothers there is a spirit that is present there the spirit of jealousy so jealousy goes to work in this in the place called dothan when joseph is going to bring take a message to his brothers they say here comes the dreamer and jealousy comes and jealousy says let's kill him let's kill him why because he has a coat of many colors now but god is going to allow jealousy to cooperate with another vice called envy when jealousy says let's kill him envy says let's throw him in, a, in an empty pit so jealousy and envy walk together to take joseph into a pit why because when he goes into a pit is a type of the death of jesus are you listening to me so envy and jealousy have worked together to bring good in the life of joseph how they have thrown him into an empty pit which is a type of what a grave and he is a classical type of the lord jesus christ so he goes into the pit as a type of his death are you still here greed now enters into the place suddenly the ishmaelites are coming the midianites are on their way to egypt greed says why should we leave him in an empty pit when we can sell him for money so greed works with envy and works with jealousy to bring him out of what the same pit which is the type of what his resurrection are you so here so greed is working together sune sune uh, sune girl sune girls or is a synergy between envy jealousy greed working together for who's good joseph are you still here so greed brings him out of the pit in a type of what resurrection and the midianites show up and they sell him for 20 pieces of silver why because the one that he represents must be sold are you still here he must be sold now the thing about it is that at the time that joseph was sold he couldn't have been sold for 30 pieces of silver because he had not attained the age jesus had to attain the age of 30 first before he could be sold because it is representative of what they characterize his life to be worth so at this point he's 20 pieces of silver he's still not as worth it's not worth that much yet which means his days must increase 
he must come to a place where he grows beyond 20 pieces of silver and when he gets to the age of 30 he will become prime minister but here's what's going on all of these vices and the power of satan do not know that they're working together for what for good joseph god needs joseph to go to egypt because that's where he's going to save israel joseph does not have the money to go there joseph does not know the direction to get there so the Midianites have to come and joseph has to go free of charge to the land of egypt can somebody shout hallelujah they do not know that they are transporting god's messenger foc free of charge are you still here and they carry him to his place because he has a coat of many colors now but god is going to allow jealousy to cooperate with another vice called envy when jealousy says let's kill him envy says let's throw him in, a, in an empty pit so jealousy and envy walk together to take joseph into a pit why because when he goes into a pit is a type of the death of jesus are you listening to me so envy and jealousy have worked together to bring good in the life of joseph how they have thrown him into an empty pit which is a type of what a grave and he is a classical type of the lord jesus christ so he goes into the pit as a type of his death are you still here greed now enters into the place suddenly the ishmaelites are coming the midianites are on their way to egypt greed says why should we leave him in an empty pit when we can sell him for money so greed works with envy and works with jealousy to bring him out of what the same pit which is the type of what his resurrection are you still here so greed is working together sune sune uh, sune girl sune god is, is a synergy between envy jealousy greed working together for who's good joseph are you still here so greed brings him out of the pit in a type of what resurrection and the midianites show up and they sell him for 20 pieces of silver why because the one that he represents must be sold are you still here he must be sold now the thing about it is that at the time that joseph was sold he couldn't have been sold for 30 pieces of silver because he had not attained the age jesus had to attain the age of 30 first before he could be sold because it is representative of what they characterize his life to be worth so at this point he's 20 pieces of silver he's still not as worth it's not worth that much yet which means his days must increase he must come to a place where he grows beyond 20 pieces of silver and when he gets to the age of 30 he will become prime minister but here's what's going on all of these vices and the power of satan do not know that they're working together for what for good joseph god needs joseph to go to egypt because that's where he's going to save israel joseph does not have the money to go there joseph does not know the direction to get there so the Midianites have to come and Joseph has to go free of charge to the land of Egypt. Can somebody shout hallelujah? They do not know that they are transporting God's messenger FOC free of charge. Are you still here? And they carry him to his place. All things Satan's greed, your enemy's jealousy, your husband's envy, your mother-in-law's little-mindedness, whatever it is that they come against you for, it will all work together. They will cooperate. They will coexist. They will be juxtaposed with each other to make sure that the purpose of God in your life comes to pass. Somebody shout anyhow.
You say, why? Because immediately after that, they took an animal and took his coat. They slew a kid, a lamb, and the blood. They took his garment, dipped it into the blood. They did not know that they were fulfilling the divine mandate. Because when you take his garments and dip it into blood, you change him from an unrighteous man to what? To a righteous man. Because when, you, when Jesus rose again from the dead, he dipped your own garment in his blood and changed your garment from being an unrighteous garment to a righteous garment. And they did not understand that the blood of that lamb is what is going to protect Joseph and keep him until he becomes what God has purposed for him to do. When Jesus rose again from Abiyakotolodogolo, the blood that was shed in which your garment was dipped that blood is going to follow you for the rest of your life instant in season and out of season it will follow you to Lokoja to Abuja and to Ogoja it will follow you to the east, west, north and the south for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the blood of the lamb will salvage you the blood will protect you the blood will increase you the blood will anoint you the blood will glorify fire you the blood will justify you somebody shout hallelujah hey because it will become evident that's why paul said we know some of you don't know it yet because you haven't seen it but I promise you on the authority of God's word, on the efficacy of the word of almighty God, on the immutability of God's word, and the credibility of that word cannot be impeached or debunked. I am telling you, you will see for a truth that everything is going to work together for your good. Hallelujah to Jesus. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that are loving God. It's in the continuous tense. To them who are loving. Because your love is being purified. Your love is growing from strength to strength. You may say, Lord, Pastor, is this thing going to work for me? I don't really, really love him yet. It doesn't matter. The point is the love has already begun. When you became a born again Christian, the love began. The love of God or for God was shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. That love will begin to grow stage by stage, strength by strength, step by step all the way. I can tell you the truth. The love I had for him 20 years ago is not the same I have today. If my love has increased, my love has grown, so is your love. You are in the process of loving. And the word says, as soon as the process of loving begins, all things begin to work. To them that are called according to his purpose the first part of the statement shows our love for God the second part shows his love for us because it was his love that compelled him to call us hallelujah before you were born before you became a visible quantity or entity God saw you and by his foreknowledge he called you by predestination to be conformed into the image of his son. Now it took a while for you to respond to that call. But you did. Hallelujah. Because the call is effectual. And he called you. And preserved you in Christ Jesus. And will keep you. Until the end of time. Why? There is a purpose to your life. You are not an accident. You are not a biological accident some biological engineering phenomenon you are the purpose a plan a decree of almighty god you were projected by a divine fiat god stood in the heavenly places pronounced your name and established the basis for your coming it was not an arbitrary whimsical or capricious act it was based on the claims of justice being met before the dispensation of grace could be released unto you are you still here so by the divine fiat by a divine promulgation of the divine decree did you hear what the bible says in the second psalm i will declare the decree thou art my son 
this day have I begotten thee. By what? Decree! So if anybody is telling you that no, because you're just by mistake born again, no, 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 no. Tell them that you are manifesting abysmal ignorance. You tell them you don't understand. Before my great, 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 the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit met on my behalf. And they said, let us, hallelujah, let us call Pastor Chris so that he will lead the household of God at the fullness of time. The enemy played with my life for about 20-something years. But when the decree was promulgated on earth, it took a hold of my heart. The same way it took a hold of your heart. And what the devil meant for evil, God began to turn around for good. And now you are chanting the triumphant canticle. And now you are praising the Lord from glory to glory. Because you are transformed into his own image from glory to glory. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so! I gotta go because we have so many things to do. How did he make it possible? I told you last week. The earth was quarreling with Adam after sin. The Adama had a problem with the Adam. And to settle the quarrel, he did something because God had told him the indication that the Adama is against you is thorns and thistles. So he took the thorns, put it on his head because his head spoke of his authority. And when the blood came down, Adama received it because it was the blood of a righteous man. Showing that there is propitiation, there is a rapprochement. To make sure that the earth is not cursed again. Because if he is a righteous man and he lives on earth and he takes the sin of the world, he will be in the exact same position that Adam was. Because Adam sinned, it was not the earth that sinned. It was Adam and God said, curse the earth. Curse is the earth because of you. So now, if Jesus is on earth as a righteous man, and he now takes the scene of the world, he has done exactly what Adam has done. And that way, the, world, the earth will rebel again. But God had an answer. Turn to somebody and say, God has an answer for you. Now, what made it possible for Adam to affect the earth? Because he was standing on the earth. Anywhere you stand in the word of God is your territory. Adam proved that the earth is his because he walked on the earth. He stood upon it. And when he sinned, his sin went through him into the ground. To ensure that when Jesus takes sin, his feet don't touch the ground. God had to elevate him on a cross. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Because it was on the cross that he received the sin and he was high off the ground. God made sure that he was in standing like Adam in the garden when he took sin. Because if he did... The earth will rebel against us a second time. So to ensure that the earth does not feel the impact of that sin, he lifted him off the ground. Hallelujah. He said, if I be lifted off the ground, will I draw men unto me? Are you still here? To make sure that the sin does not affect the earth again. Shh. He was out there, far away from the ground. So when he was there and the Lord... God put the sin of the world upon him. His feet didn't touch the ground until he had died physically. And once you die, you cease to exist. So the earth never, ever felt the impact of the sin that he took just like Adam did. So God was able to make sure that the earth will not rebel against us because Jesus had already settled it when he was at the praetorium and they put the cross upon the, the thorns upon his head he settled the problem and so God didn't want the problem to ensue again so the only way he could die for us and still save the earth was to make sure his feet don't touch the ground are you still here? that is why when he comes to you for the rapture his feet won't touch the ground because if he touches the earth there will be a change He's going to stand in the air and call you and say, come home. Hallelujah. It is only when he comes at the second time and the Bible says, when he lands at the Mount of Olives, Bosa, the earth, will open up unto him. Can you say amen? So you need to understand that everything that God needs to do for us is already done it. And so he can say categorically, all things. Hallelujah. Not some things, not many things, not most things, 
not sundry things but what all things somebody say all things all things all things all things are working together for good to them that love God to them that are the called according to his purpose our father we thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus and I bless you right here that if there be people here who don't know Jesus when we call let them stand let our glory and honor be yours we ask in the name of Jesus thank you for watching today's video this channel is brought to you by hopelify.org to inspire you to become the very best that you were designed to be remember a few simple keys mastered and consistently applied are often all we need to excel in each area of life you can help make this channel even better in three simple ways one subscribe to receive more videos two leave a comment below to let me know what resonates with you from today's video or three suggest a topic for a video that you will like for us to feature on this channel visit hopelify.org to post your own inspirational content